Good morning, family. Sorry it's been a little while since we've uh, posted a video. My mom is actually visiting, so we've been just kind of busy in the moment hanging out with her. And, you know, as you know, it's kind of boring on the farm right now. Basically, all we're doing is moving cows every few days and moving sheep every week or so. <laughs> so not much going on. We haven't even really done any of the projects that we were planning on working on. Um, yeah, we've just been kind of laying low, but we definitely need to get, you know, working on some things. It's just been so cold. We haven't been wanting to go you know, outside and, and work. We've been hungering down and just sort of taking a break for the winter, which is just fine. <laughs> it is what it is. But today we are getting ready to go on a little adventure. We are actually heading to Cumberland Falls, which is like the Niagara Falls of Kentucky or something like that. I don't know. But we're heading there. I've been wanting to go. My mom is here visiting and she's always up for a road trip. So we're going to head down to Cumberland Falls. It's about two, a little bit over two hours away. So we're going to do that, but I need to get the cows moved and chores done before I before we head out. So mom has the girls, which is awesome. I love having her here to, you know, manage the girls. Ryan is actually in the city. He had an appointment. Uh, so I'm taking care of this before we leave. And then we're going to get out of here and I'll take you along with us. So let's get these cows moved. Let's check on everybody and hit the road. Okay, so I've got my corner post mark. So we actually, okay, back up. <laughs> We've had some questions about how we do our fencing, both for the goats, sheep, and the cows. Um, a lot of people are getting into livestock. A lot of people are getting into the homesteading life or just getting animals for the first time or learning about rotational grazing and want to move their animals around using the electric fencing, which I strongly recommend. I love the electric fencing. We used to use <clears throat> the uh, Premier One net fencing and it worked great but it was a pain in the butt <laughs> it was a pain to move they were heavy um you know cumbersome to get like all the fences rolled up and everything i love the single strand or like with the sheep and the goats we do the double strand but it works absolutely fabulous it works I mean, almost flawlessly every time. The only time that the animals start escaping <clears throat> is if we haven't moved them in a timely manner and they're hungry, which when you try and escape too. <laughs> so anyways, I have found the most effective and efficient way to do this. First off, we have double the amount of posts and wire than we need for each paddock. So I have an extra set of step-in posts and an extra reel for the cows. For the sheep, I have an extra set of step-in posts and two extra reels and the same for the goats. Mm, nope, actually I don't for the goats because we put them in the barn. But for the sheep and the cows, we have extra sets of everything so that we can build a paddock, um, you know, right next to them while they are safely contained. And it's not like some sort of crazy, you know, trying to get them moved, but not having fence up or whatever. So anyways, I have found the most effective best way to do this is I measure out for my corner posts first. So like today's paddock is 200 feet by 100 feet. So it's just about a half an acre. This will last them three days or so, uh, just depending on the forage. So I measure that out and place my corner posts. And then I walk the line between post placing my step in post every 20 feet or so. I just eyeball it. I don't like actually measure it. I just eyeball it. Then I go and I start running the line, but I start at the far end. So I don't know if you can see it down there. I'll start at the far end, come up and around and stop it right before I get to these guys. So I'll stop it at the corner here or maybe come in one post. Then go back, turn off the charger and drop this line in front of them, they'll come across and then I can run the, the new line 
in place of where the old line was. That way they're always contained 100%. There's never a question on if they're gonna get out or not or go where I don't want them to. Um, and they respect it because they know you know, they know what it does. So it's, it's the fastest way to do it. I can move a paddock in probably 30 minutes. Um, although today <laughs> I am a little bit slower. I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the video that I am limping a little bit. Uh, about a week ago, maybe a week, a half ago, Ryan and I were moving the sheep, um, structure and I went to lift it. And you know, everybody always says lift with your legs, right? Well, I lifted with my legs, but I also went up on my tippy toes to lift it even further and pulled or tore or something. <laughs> I felt a tearing, popping sensation in my calf. Um, so, and it is very bruised, very sore. Uh, I couldn't walk on it for a few days. So I'll put a picture in, it's cute. Um, it's a real lovely shade of purple. So anyways, <laughs> so that is why I might be limping a little bit if you see in the video and why it also takes me a little bit longer to do this because I'm injured. It is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna go, I gotta get the step in post from the quad. They're right there. I'm gonna go get the rest of the step in post, walk this line and then come back up um, and run the reel and we'll be done. So just that easy, I've got my post set up. I got the line run up to where the cows are. So I'm gonna walk back down over here. I left the quad over here. I'm gonna walk back down over here. I'm gonna drop off all the extra posts that I don't need and I drop them off on the far side. So it's, um, <clears throat> so they're ready for the next paddock. Um, so I'm gonna drop these posts off, head back up, turn off the charger and then we'll drop the line and let the cows across. They're definitely ready. <laughs> so this paddock is actually, this whole pasture is where the pigs were last year. And there's definitely, you know, a decent amount of green grass, you can see it, but it's not, it's not as great of a pasture as I would want. The pigs definitely rooted up a lot of weed seeds when they were over here. So there's quite a few, um, quite a decent stand of weeds. And, but the cows are doing a good job of tromping it all down. Uh, we're gonna put the sheep in here afterwards, after the cows go through, we're gonna run the sheep through it and make sure that they get kind of the rest of it and there's really nothing left. And then hopefully, <clears throat> as we go along, this pasture will do better. And then we just need to figure out where we were gonna put the pigs because I don't think that we want to mess up any more of our, uh, any more of our pasture with the pigs. But we'll figure out a good place for them uh, when we get some more. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna get these cows moved across. They're definitely ready. So let's go turn off the fence and drop their line. The poor cows, <laughs> they followed me over to turn the charger off to the other side of the paddock and now they're coming back, uh, coming back this way. The quad's getting ready to drive away. Have we stopped? Good, we stopped. <laughs> Guess I didn't put the brake on. Anyways, 
now they're coming back so i turn the charger off i'm gonna go over here and drop the um drop the other side and i bet you they'll come right across we go come on everybody come on cows let's go move across come on cows there we go there we go good job guys good job guys good job everybody good job everybody All right, well, I have got them moved across. I've got part of the line, the old line dropped. Their line is secured to all the posts. I'm actually gonna add a post right here. Uh, I, I always hate, I can't do this. This, whatever, this fan right here, it's, um, <clears throat> it's a little bit wide and it'd be fine, but I just like to add posts just to be safe. So I'm gonna add a post right here and then go Drop the old line and I got to move there and reel it up and then I got to move their water over. So I'm going to do that right now. just a quick equipment overview we use the gallagher step-in posts i actually got them from my local feed store um, i really like them they're nice and sturdy they've got two <clears throat> like steps for you to step on and i just like the way that their hooks are better than some of the other hooks so we use the gallagher step-in posts i use the intellitwine from Premier One, and I can't remember which one it is. <clears throat> it's a thinner one, like 2.0 or something. I don't remember. I, I'd, I'll have to look, and if I can find it before I um, put this video up, I'll like put it right there. So, um, yeah, it's also not cold out. <laughs> so, um, the Intellitwine, I think it's the 2.0. I don't know, something along those lines. And then we use the um, IntelliShock um, 120. It's probably overkill because our ground is so wet here uh, on the regular that I could go with like the 60, the IntelliShock 60, but I just would rather have more than less. It's not that much more expensive. Um, and we really like them. I've had IntelliShock chargers for years, probably, probably, probably since 2012. So 10 years I've been using IntelliShock chargers back when they were in like big, the solar chargers, back where they were in like big boxes. <laughs> they were huge and so hard to carry around. These ones now are just, they're awesome. I love how small they are. I love how easy they are to use, but we, I like the IntelliShock chargers. I've not, knock on wood, I've not had any problems with them. They hold a charge real well, even, you know, even here where we have some dreary weeks and days on end. <clears throat> Obviously your mileage may, may vary. You may not have as good luck with them, but we really like them. So 
anyways, that's just sort of an equipment. Oh, and then the reels. Um, I don't use, um, I don't use geared reels. I just have the regular easy reels from Premier One. I really like Premier One's products. They have good shipping, good customer service. Uh, if you call them and tell them what you want to do, they will kind of walk you through all the things that you'll need. They're just super helpful. Um, one of my IntelliShock chargers, one of my old ones, was having an issue with the switch. And so I called them to ask, you know, like, A, if they sold replacement parts or, you know, if I needed to just buy a whole new one. And the guy was very helpful. You know, he was like, no, you don't need to buy a new one. Just go to Lowe's and get this. And he showed me the part and he sent me like a picture. And he was just super, super helpful. He very could easily could have said, oh, no, you just need to buy a new one. And, you know, I could have dropped 600 bucks with him or whatever they are. I don't know, 300 bucks or whatever. Um, but he didn't. He helped me like troubleshoot what was going on. So I just really recommend Premier One if you are new or even if you're a veteran to um, electric fencing. They're they're helpful and I feel like their products are good quality. The only thing that I don't like with them is their step and post, but it's not a big deal. I like the Gallagher post better just because they hold the line a little bit easier. So anyways, I'm going to go. I got to get these guys move, water moved across and I got to drop the old line and get that reeled up. So let's get that done um, because time is ticking and we want to get on the road. All right, well, I finally got the water moved for the cows. It took forever. I had to like go find hoses because <laughs> we had sort of left them all over uh, from the last places. So I am just checking on the sheep real quick. We actually put them down here in the pond area. Uh, this is our bigger pond. And there, this whole hillside right here was like regrown and ready to graze. So I'm, we just threw them out here for a few days. They still have access to the other paddock um, up there where their like huts and stuff are, but there's plenty of trees down here for them to, to hide and take shelter in. But I, I'm sure that they, if they wanted to, they could go up to those other things, but they are down here. So I am just walking over to check on them and make sure that nobody's dropped a lamb. Um, because although it's supposed to be nice today so we could probably leave them out uh, with it but we are moving any lambs and ewes up to the barn while we're kind of in this inclement weather but I'm seeing everybody and I, I don't see any babies on the ground there they are right there let me get a little closer there's one you back here. I just want to check. Nope. No babies, guys. No babies today. So I think this one is pregnant. And I think that one is. I, I don't think that the other two are. Um, and this black one right here, she lost her baby. Um, it was one of the ones that we had left out, hoping that everybody would manage. And it, uh, I think we think it got like laid on in the shelter or something. So kind of a disappointment, kind of a bummer. But that's what we get for letting our ewes lamb right now. This is not the time to be lambing. We usually wait for a little bit longer. So anyways, um, everybody looks good. They're all eaten. They're happy. So I'm going to let them be. And then head up to the dairy barn, get the goats out, and get everything ready for tonight for Ryan, since we're probably gonna be gone um, into the evening. He'll, he'll do evening chores tonight. So uh, let's head up there and get that finished.
the amount of rain that we have had in the last couple weeks, it's uh, kind of crazy. It's very muddy. Look, my dogs are filthy. Oh, Sue. Are you filthy? <laughs> They're filthy. All right, let's get over and get the dairy chores done or the dairy barn chores done. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be done. So the little lambs in the barn are doing good. Um, the singleton over here, he is, he's getting big. He's a bruiser. So, but everybody is doing fine. Um, these little guys, this is the little, whoop, that one. That's the little ewe lamb. The other one's a little ram lamb. So we actually have been holding the little ewe lamb a whole bunch. Um, just to kind of keep her a little bit more tame than, you know, than the other use, but the girls love it, of course. Anyways, all right, I am done out here. Everything is prepped for the night. So I'm gonna head in, let's get these girls and all of the stuff that we need packed up and hit the road. Let's go for a little walk. 